Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. Let us give praise and worship to Almighty God by singing hymn number 654, Loving and Forgiving. Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. spirit. My brothers and sisters, we welcome all of you to Sacred Heart of Jesus Catholic Church in Hot Springs Village, those who are parishioners and anyone who are guests with us, with us, that is, in social media. Uh, I'm glad that you are with us and hope you will fully participate in this Mass as if you were physically here at Sacred Heart of Jesus on this second Sunday of Easter, also known as the Sunday of Divine Mercy. So as we begin our celebration of the Eucharist today, let's pause for a moment, recognizing, acknowledging, rejoicing in the mercy of God. Let's call to mind the reality that at times we are not merciful as we should be. For those times in which we failed in that and in other ways, we ask the Lord's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, by your resurrection, you brought new life to the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal us of our fears and sins. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you hear our prayers and intercede with the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen.
everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Luke wrote a two-volume work. Volume one was his Gospel, and volume two was Acts of the Apostles, which describes the life of the church after the resurrection of Jesus. Every year, during the seven weeks of Easter, the first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. In today's passage, Luke gives an idealized description of early Christian community life. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give them. 
Our second reading during most of this Easter season is taken from the first letter of Peter, which was addressed to Christians living in the northern part of what is today Turkey. These Christians found themselves out of step with the society in which they lived, and they felt abused and discriminated against. The resurrection of Jesus was held out to them as a basis of hope during these trials, which is why the church chooses to read from this book during the Easter season. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be to be proved for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice in an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, 
so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it in my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, happy Easter. In the church's calendar, Easter is not a one-day feast. It's eight days long. Eight days because the reality encountered in Easter is so profound, so deep, that we simply must take time to soak in the mystery of the resurrection. Think back to last Sunday and how the gospel began. On the first day of the week, early in the morning, while it was still dark. Now think about the gospel we just heard and how it begins. On the evening of the first day of the week. Notice how the church has traveled from the morning to the evening of Easter Sunday over the past eight days. Now there are two little words in the gospel that are particularly meaningful this year. Fear and peace. Those two words are so important to us as we struggle with COVID-19 and the fear that has engulfed not just the U.S., but the world. Fear. We hear that the doors were locked where the disciples were gathered because of fear. And doesn't that sound like us? sheltering in place, afraid to even open the door for a delivery. Just leave it on the front porch. You see, the opposite of faith is not unbelief. The opposite of faith is fear. We can't turn on television without hearing about another thousand deaths. 
the count just continues to rise. And as a result, we become just like those disciples, locked in fear. Can we trust God? How could he let this happen? Those are the same thoughts and emotions that the gospel, that the disciples experienced that evening of the resurrection. So maybe the question for us is, how do we overcome fear? How do we restore faith? Our gospel tells us what drove away the disciples' fear, Christ's presence in their midst. And yet it seems like this is exactly what we're missing today, Christ's presence. We're used to physically receiving Christ in the Eucharist. But our sheltering in place has eliminated that. It's natural to experience fear when we sense that God is missing. We live in a physical world, a world defined by what we can see, what we can touch, what we can smell, what we can taste. And yet, God is beyond all of those categories. That's why God took on human flesh, so that we could see, touch, and taste the divine reality of love and eternal life. That is the Eucharist, and we miss it. At the heart of our problem is the reality that we were wrapped up in fear and death during Lent because of the coronavirus. As a result, we may have forgotten the Easter message. Easter is about life. God hates death and always wants to bring life from death. How does God respond to fear, to death itself? God raises up new life. God transforms fear and loss and pain into peace and life. That is the ultimate Paschal mystery that's lived out in our daily lives. So how do we know when we're in the presence of God? When we experience peace. That was Christ's message to his disciples in the gospel. Peace be with you. So let's turn that spotlight of the gospel onto ourselves and ask, when in our past have we experienced the peace of God's presence? Think about a difficult time in our life, maybe a time when we were worried, maybe afraid, and yet, we felt God's presence. We felt that God was with us. It might have been the loss of a job, death of a loved one, a major decision in our life. Often, we can more easily see how God has always been in our life by looking at the past rather than in our present time of fear. 
Today is Divine Mercy Sunday. And if there was ever a time that we needed God's mercy, it is now. And what better way to end today than with this prayer? Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, Look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. May God shower us with his mercy, and may that bring us peace. And may Almighty God bless you in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. stand now and together profess our faith in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, of all, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It is because of our faith in a God who is merciful that we can dare come before the throne of God with our prayers and our petitions. For the church, that we may offer an uncompromising witness to Christ by being united in mind and spirit as we worship, study, and serve the needs of others. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, particularly those with COVID-19, that the risen Lord will bring an end to the coronavirus and give hope, healing, and new life to those who are sick. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who are frightened, that they may find the comfort of Christ in their fear and darkness. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who work in essential jobs, that God will protect them and their families from illness and give them strength to fulfill their duties. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for all working to end the pandemic, that God inspire and give insight to all who are caring for the sick, developing treatments, or researching vaccines. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
and for those members of our family and of our parish family who have died, that the risen Lord will welcome them and share eternal life with them. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the needs and intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious Father, we come before you humbly and yet confidently with these prayers and petitions as we rejoice in your Son, Jesus, crucified and risen, and the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, not only upon the apostles, but upon us. May we seek a life that gives you glory and praise, and is lived each day in your love and in your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in singing hymn number 568, Hallelujah number one. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your name, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they and we acclaim. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, 
you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward now to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his holy spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Anthony our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all those who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In this moment of quiet, please use this time to offer your spiritual communion.
Let us now stand in prayer. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds, in our hearts, and in our actions. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, we thank you for being a part of this uh, Sunday Mass at Sacred Heart of Jesus Catholic Church. Uh, I certainly would rather have you right in front of me as uh, we normally are, but we make the best of the situation that we're in. Just know that though you're at a distance from me now, you are close in my heart and certainly close every day in my prayers. Ask you to uh, uh, pray for each other and for me and for our country and world during this most difficult time. I want to thank those who helped make this fast possible. First, Bill Leffler, uh, who is uh, my technician, who does a wonderful job. We appreciate that. I think we're improving with each mass we do with him. So we thank him for his added efforts. And to those who helped with this liturgy, our music people, Lynn Border and Kathy Krause, our lectors today, uh, Mike and Ann Webster. And of course, I very much appreciate Deacon John being with me here and offering our homily for this day. Remember, this is Divine Mercy Sunday. Hopefully you will, through sometime during the day, pray the chaplet of Divine Mercy as we reach the end of the novena uh, yesterday. Certainly you're welcome. The church will be open all day. You could come to the church to pray. And though we will not have a, a public uh, time of prayer, you're certainly uh, welcome to be here, even in the hour of mercy, uh, three o'clock today. Uh, if you do come, don't know how many would, just make sure we spread out, use good social distancing uh, in your time of prayer. Let you know there is a possibility that I may start live streaming daily mass. Uh, we'll keep you informed. Those who are on Facebook will let you know. And for those who uh, can't join us, uh, let's pray for those who can't join us at all. There are some folks in our congregation that don't have even the capabilities to have the Mass on television. So let's especially keep them in our thoughts and in our prayers. God bless you all. The Lord be with you. And be with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all this day, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth the masses ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 